most useless mega projects in the world? Have you heard about a mega city made for millions of people, but hardly anyone lives there? And did you know the US spent $17 billion on a supersized project that nobody even uses? Today, let's take a closer look at five of the biggest projects in the world that turned out to be a huge waste. Stick around until the end, and we'll also explain why these projects ended up being useless. So, let's get into it without wasting any time. Before starting this video, subscribe to our channel and click on bell notifications. It really encourages us to post more content related to mega projects and constructions. Let's get started. Number 5. Forest City, Malaysia. Imagine talking about a city that seemed empty, like a ghost town. But now let's look at a new city being built on islands made from reclaimed land. It's futuristic. This city, called Forest City, will be all about being smart and green. It's being built on four made-up islands, and it'll have its own forest made by people. Forest City is in a great spot because it's close to Singapore, which is a busy place with a lot of ships coming in and out and a strong economy. They've even made a bridge that connects Forest City and Singapore so you can get between them super fast, just 20 minutes. What's neat is that Forest City will have its own customs place, so people living there can easily go back and forth between the new city and Singapore. They're really pushing for an eco-friendly environment in this city. The buildings will have gardens on their roofs and on the sides, making it feel like a jungle. They've thought about how the city will look too. The roads will have layers, cars will drive and park on the lower part, while the upper part will have parks, places to play sports, and spots where people can easily catch transportation. Forest City wants to use only renewable energy. They think they'll finish building the whole thing by 2035, and it's going to cost 100 billion, but there are lots of problems, like budget and politics, that are slowing things down. Most of the money for this project is coming from China, and when they first started building, people from China had a pretty easy time going in and out of the city. So, what happened was that many people from China couldn't buy houses in their own country because the prices were too high. So, they decided to buy houses in Forest City instead. By 2019, most of the people who owned houses there were from China. Even the signs on the streets were in Chinese, and the schools in the area started teaching Chinese. The people who lived in Malaysia couldn't afford to buy these houses because they were made for rich Chinese people. A lot of Malaysians didn't like this, and they said it was like a new kind of colonialism. Then, the leader of the country changed, and the new leader, Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad, said that foreigners couldn't own houses in Forest City anymore. This made many foreigners leave, and it also stopped new people from buying houses. After that, the coronavirus came, and people couldn't travel. The Malaysian government also had rules that made it hard for new investors to come in. Because of all these problems, by the start of 2020, there were only a few hundred people living in Forest City, even though it was supposed to be for hundreds of thousands of people. The project hasn't been going well. Some people say that only a very small number of houses have been sold since the pandemic started. Also, the company that was building Forest City had to let go of more than 1,000 workers in Malaysia because the project was not doing well. Forest City was probably too ambitious and too futuristic, and now it has too many problems with politics. Even though a high budget was spent on it, right now, Forest City doesn't seem to be useful at all. Number 4. Interstate H3, Hawaii Let's talk about a superhighway in Hawaii called Interstate H3. It's 26 kilometers long and goes through one of the most beautiful places in the world. People were so amazed by the views that there were worries about them stopping and causing traffic problems. But there's more to this highway than just its beauty. Back in 1960, the idea for this highway came up because it would connect important places for defense like the Pearl Harbor Naval Basie and the Marini Corps Air Station. However, not everyone was happy about it. Environmental groups and native Hawaiians were concerned that building the highway would bring too much development and harm the environment. Laws and changes in the Rati to protect the valleys made the project stall for a long time. It took 26 years, and in 1989, they finally got the green light to start building. The highway officially opened it in 1997, almost 37 years after they first thought of it. What makes this highway cool is that it's considered an engineering marvel. It had to be built in a place with tough landscapes, 
so they used advanced technologies like high-tech tunnels and viaducts, which are like bridges. But building it wasn't easy, and the costs went way beyond what they first estimated. In fact, it became the most expensive highway in the world, with a total cost of $1.3 billion. That's about $50 million for every kilometer. Despite the enormous budget spending on building this beautiful highway, many people don't find it very useful. Some people even call it a road to nowhere, because the reasons it was built for in the 1960s aren't important anymore, and it doesn't go directly to downtown Honolulu. Another problem is that native Hawaiians, who are the majority of the local population, don't use this highway. They believe it's like a cursed road, because important cultural sites were destroyed when it was being built. Even though the H3 is considered a big achievement, especially for huge projects, some people, especially the native Hawaiians, still think it's not useful. But at least it's not completely abandoned like the next project on our list. Number 3. Naipiedao Myanmar! Let's talk about another big project featured on Top Gear. This time, it's not just any airport. It's an entire new capital city in Myanmar. Back in 2002, the leaders of Myanmar's military quietly started building this new capital. It was kind of a surprise move, but countries like Brazil, Egypt, and Pakistan have changed their capitals before, so it's not totally unheard of. In November 2005, the leaders told the public about the plan, but kept the name of the new capital a secret for four months. Finally, they revealed it, Naipida, which means the king's residence. People were curious about why they decided to make this new capital. Some thought they were worried about a possible sea attack, while others believed astrologers might have given advice. However, a big part of the decision had to do with the old capital Yangon. Yangon is a huge city with 7 million people, but it was having some problems. It was running out of space and expected to get even more crowded by 2050. Plus, Yangon was made the capital during British rule mainly for the British Navy's benefit. So, moving the capital to Naipidal, which is more in the middle of the country, made sense for Myanmar's future plans. The new project was built really fast, and the government has put a massive $4 billion into it so far. It's got all these things that usually attract visitors, like a super-wide 20-lane highway, more than a hundred fancy hotels in three different parts of the city, cool golf courses, museums, and even a giant 99-meter-tall copy of something cool from another city called Yangon. But guess what's missing? People. There are fewer than a million folks living there, and most of them were already living in the suburbs, before this place became the big city capital. Why don't more people want to live there? Well, there are some really important things missing, like good hospitals and schools, and not many chances for jobs. That's why most people don't want to stay there permanently. So, instead of being a lively city, it often feels empty and lonely, almost like a ghost town. Imagine this. The huge 20-lane highway is almost always empty. You won't see traffic jams there. Sometimes you might spot just one car cruising along this gigantic road. They built an airport that can handle 3.5 million people every year, but on busy days, only a few folks, maybe a dozen or so, actually use it. Even the shopping malls don't get many visitors, just some people from other countries who work there and only come on weekends. And those fancy hotel lobbies? Mostly empty. So even if for now it doesn't seem very useful for most of the country's people, there's a chance it'll change and become a bustling place someday soon. Number 2. Ciudad Real Central Airport, Spain. Spain is a prime level place to visit in Europe, and that's why they wanted to build Ciudad Real Central Airport. They thought it would be a great spot for people going on vacation in Spain or from other countries. The idea was to take some of the pressure off the super busy main airport in Madrid. This new airport was supposed to be special because it had one of the top five longest runways in Europe. At first, it could handle 2 million passengers each year, which might not sound like a lot compared to the 70 million people Madrid's airport could handle, but they had plans to make it bigger, up to 10 million passengers a year. So, in 2009, when the airport opened, the $1.3 billion spent on it seemed like it could be worth it. But things didn't go as planned. By 2012, the company in charge of the airport went bankrupt, and everything went downhill. One big problem was where they put the airport, even though it was called the Central Airport. 
It wasn't in a central place at all. It was 200 kilometers away from Madrid. Not many people wanted to travel so far, and big airlines didn't want to fly from there. So instead of having lots of airlines and passengers, it ended up with just one small airline. Without big airlines, the airport struggled a lot. By 2012, it had a massive $350 million debt. The dream of making the airport bigger and better had to be put on hold, and the future of Ciudad Real Central Airport became uncertain due to budget troubles and not being in the right place, as expected. The Ciudad Real Airport faced financial difficulties and had to be auctioned off in 2013. It gained attention when the famous British TV show Top Gear featured it as an abandoned place in 2014. Despite multiple attempts to sell it, including a surprising $12,000 offer, the airport remained unsold until 2019. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, many businesses suffered, including the Ciudad Real Airport. However, it found a surprising solution. Instead of hoping for a quick return of passengers, the new owners decided to turn the airport into a parking space for idle planes. This worked well due to the airport's dry climate, long runway, and spacious area. By August 2020, around 65 airplanes were parked there, and plans were underway to expand the storage capacity to accommodate over 300 aircraft. This change in purpose brought much-needed business to the airport, but it's important to note that it's a temporary solution. Once the pandemic is over and regular flights resume, all the stored planes will leave. Despite this brief success, the Ciudad Real Airport's billion-dollar project remains largely unutilized, offering little benefit to travelers worldwide. This highlights the unpredictable and challenging nature of the aviation industry, where unexpected twists and turns can impact even the biggest projects. Number 1. Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository Let's wrap up our big project with something about nuclear waste. You know, it's not talked about much but it's a big deal. If we don't handle it right, it can be more dangerous than anything we've seen in a long, long time. Right now, the nuclear waste we generate is kept above the ground near the power plants, but scientists say the safest way to deal with it is to bury it really deep underground. Back in the 1980s, the US wanted to figure out a permanent solution to deal with all this nuclear waste. They thought Yucca Mountain in Nevada was a good spot. It's away from where most people live, close to where they used to test nuclear stuff, and the plan was to store the waste in tunnels about 300 meters below the mountain. Sounds good on paper, right? But people in Nevada weren't happy about it. They said, why us? Even though Nevada didn't have any nuclear reactors, they were being asked to be the dump for the entire country. People there were worried that the waste could mess up their water, which is crucial for the Native Americans who've lived there for a really long time. In 2002, the project got the green light and construction started again. But Nevada wasn't having it. They thought it would make them look bad and hurt tourism. Some even said they were only chosen because there aren't that many people in Nevada and they don't have a big say in Congress. By the time Barack Obama became president, the whole thing was a big mess. In 2010, his administration said, nope, we can't do this, and they stopped giving money for it. A few years later, a court said, start it up again. But not much progress happened. Now, the Biden team has said, we're not doing Yucca Mountain anymore. So after more than 40 years, a ton of money and lots of arguing. Yucca Mountain is just sitting there, never used, and some people call it a useless big project. That's it for today. Now, if you love to watch mega projects and construction related content, consider to subscribe to this channel, and I promise that we will post high quality content. Bye!